Casey Woody, a name that may sound familiar to Arkansans as it shook our state when a man she met online stalked, kidnapped, and murdered her. 20 years later, her name still remembered in small town Greenbrier, her friends keeping her memory alive. Also on a mission to continue to make sure it doesn't happen again. TCB 11's Ashley Godwin shares Casey's pivotal case that changed everything for police as the internet became the next social icon for teens. She was really goofy and bubbly. Casey Woody, bright and full of joy, like her favorite color yellow. Her best friends were Samantha Mann and Jessica Bradford. They all grew up in Greenbrier together. We each had our own personalities. Casey was definitely the outgoing one. I was always the quiet one, and Sam was a perfect in-between. In 2002, the 13-year-olds loved listening to NSYNC on cassette tapes. Sam and, and I and Casey, we did all kinds of weird stuff. Spending the night at each other's houses, watching Disney Channel and Nickelodeon. But something new was catching teens' attention the World Wide Web. The first thought of communicating with people online was how cool it was. The girls hung out in chat rooms, messaging other teens. That's where they met people like Dave and Scott. Scott, who became Casey's online boyfriend, went by Taz2999 and Casey, Model Behavior 63, messaging each other often. At first, it didn't cross my mind that it was someone that she was talking to online. December 3rd, 2002, Casey went through her normal routine. She went to school, and when she got home, she started messaging Scott. Her dad worked during the night as a police officer, and her brother, a student in evening class. Casey was home by herself, deep in conversation with Scott. Until she stopped replying. It wasn't until hours later when Casey's brother and dad arrived home that they would realize that something was wrong. The big thing that I remember was that the, there, they had a, uh, a small throw rug uh, by the front door and it was all crumpled up. Marty Montgomery was the sheriff of Faulkner County at the time. He remembers her glasses were thrown off to the side, something they couldn't explain if she just left the house by herself. By dark, it was obvious that uh, she, she was missing, something had happened. The next day, still no one had heard from Casey. Local and federal law enforcement agencies teamed up to find her, going through the family's computer and questioning Casey's friends. It wasn't until Jessica and Samantha remembered someone else, another one of Casey's online friends. All of a sudden, like it was like a light bulb went off and we're like, what about Dave? because we started putting together just little bits and pieces of things he would say, like he had an aunt that was sick and she was somewhere near Arkansas and he was probably gonna come visit her. Police were able to track down Dave, the teenage boy that Casey and her friends had gotten to know. It turns out he was actually 47-year-old David Fuller from California. Officers then traced a rented van and a Conway storage unit back to him. When they got there, David shot and killed himself. He had killed Casey hours earlier. It's just, it's heartbreaking. I mean, it just literally breaks your heart uh, that you try so hard. All the resources that we had available to us uh, for the right reason. And uh, it, it didn't work out. And I just remember we collapsed down onto the staircase. It was kind of like a betrayal on, you know, I lost two friends sort of, and I felt gross about even thinking that he was my friend. But the night came with peace, a sign they felt was from Casey. We all went and sat out on my back porch. Uh, we had a glass den back porch with a swing. And as we were sitting there, it started to, s as we were sitting there, it started to snow. And so that was kind of like a sign for me that, that she was saying that she was okay. Casey's murder changed everything for law enforcement in Arkansas. This was the first time police encountered internet stalking of a minor to this extent. It was new. It was something that our case kind of kicked the door down that, guess what? Our kids are not safe. They're not safe in your living room. They're not safe in their bedrooms. And now 20 years later, the girls have grown and have kids of their own. 
They share Casey's story as a way to keep others safe. It's something when somebody that you can physically see in front of you is telling you that this can happen, it's not just a story, because guess what, it happened right here, it happened to my friend, it happened to me. Parents really just need to be in depth and nosy, their kids are gonna hate it, but know the passwords and know your, your girls, your kids' friends, because I always think if, if Rick hadn't known Casey's friends, would the investigation stalled out somewhere. Casey's family and friends, along with law enforcement, have traveled around the country to explain the dangers of talking to strangers on the Internet. Her family started the Casey Woody Foundation in her honor.